with last week's pullback, my next guest says the record run in stocks can continue as long as earnings deliver. And he has four names in four different sectors. He sees well positioned for gains from here. Joining me now is Michael Landsberg, CIO at Landsberg Bennett Private Wealth Management. Michael, thanks for being with us. So we had a very good first quarter. Where does the market go from here? Deidre, I think, you know, I'm excited that the market seems to be trading on earnings. You know, we, we had a lot of this expectations about the Fed intervening, and that was kind of distorting, I think, what was really going on fundamentally. But, last, you know, first quarter, we had 8% year-over-year S&P 500 earnings growth, over 30% in the NASDAQ. And I think that's a strong determining factor what's going to go on. Uh, earnings drive stocks, certainly in intermediate and longer term, and that's what we're focusing on. Isn't that a little to be determined? It feels like over the last few weeks, stocks have reacted more to Fed speak, the potential number of rate cuts, commodity prices. How are you? How can we tell already that it's trading on earnings? Well, I think the first quarter traded on earnings. Certainly, okay. the Fed speak has gotten involved with where we are. And unfortunately, what happens is in the short term, there's a lot of you know a lot of dislocation in the market because of you know a speech here, an off word said by one of the Fed governors somewhere else. But at the end of the day, longer-term investors need to focus on earnings. Certainly, the short-term stuff is, is going to play itself out. I was just talking to our previous guest, Dan Niles, at the start of the show. I'm not sure if you heard that, but he was pointing to Tesla delivery numbers and how the stock reacted pretty strongly and whether that might be a canary in the coal mine. Do you think that um, expectations are high going into earnings and any stumble could throw off markets, especially from the, the big tech companies? I think Tesla's a little bit different in that Tesla, we've been negative on Tesla for you know, over a year. Um, the EV market is, is, is not as strong as, you know, as many people think. The Chinese have certainly you know, gone ahead of Tesla. So I don't look at Tesla as really a market, a harbinger of what's going to go on. I look at the rest of the market and say there's a lot of growth going on. I think uh, NVIDIA's numbers are way more important to what's going to go on than, than certainly Tesla. And that ecosystem that NVIDIA has, has kind of grown itself around AI, that's way more important than something like Tesla that I think is, you know, kind of two years ago story. Right. And you say that NVIDIA is attractively priced for investors, not traders. Explain that. You need to have a longer time horizon. Absolutely. I think if you look at today and go, boy, the, the P.E. on this is really high, their earnings growth is so strong that if I look a couple of years out and say, if I want to hold this for two or three years, the multiple is not very high because their earnings growth is that exponential, at least at this point. I mean, everybody on the street was basically off by 50 percent last year in terms of how much earnings they really did. So they continue at a very good clip. Right. I think we're going to look at 26 and 27 and go, boy, in the video was pretty cheap back in uh, 2024. It's been amazing to watch that price to earnings ratio change with their numbers and their quarterly <laughs> results. Um, let's get beyond tech, though. We did so with Dan Niles as well, and he's looking outside of the Meg 7 and tech as a whole. And you've got some picks in auto and industrials. Tell us about them. Yeah, I like O'Reilly Automotive. Um, it's kind of the anti-tech play. Um, everybody's got to fix their car. Um, they've got a nice balance between do-it-yourselfers and commercial. So I think they're not relying on one or the other. But you know, cars break, um, and people need to fix their cars. They've always been a good operator. It's basically a two-person show. I, I think AutoZone and um, and O'Reilly are, are, are the two best in breed. We, we favor O'Reilly because of you know, growth and as well as valuation. But I think it's a good story that continues to go on. It's not going to be outsourced by AI. You're going to be fixing your own car uh, and, and your own truck or vehicle. So I think it's a good spot to be. Again, PE is very realistic in terms of their growth. Right. More of a value pick. Um, tell me about Ryan Mattel, too, an auto and defense company. Yeah, Rhein Metal is actually a, a, a German defense cop. They're in auto, but for the most part, what we're looking at is a way to be able to play kind of the restocking of munitions all across Europe because of what's going on in, uh, in Ukraine. So what's going to happen, and they, they got a contract actually in the last couple of weeks from the to German government, you're seeing more and more money being spent on kind of replacing some of the things that are being used in this war over there. I don't see the war necessarily going away. This is a way for us to be able to play something locally, um, much better valuations than U.S. defense companies, but they're right on the ground very close and so they can get supplies to Ukraine uh, more quickly. I think that's the way that the governments of Europe are going to start giving supplies as opposed to dollars to, to the Ukraine situation. Well, thanks for being with us, Michael. Appreciate your insights.